Thank you for listening and supporting The Daily Memphian. Sign up for one of our many free newsletters and breaking news alerts at dailymemphian.com slash email to receive the latest local news stories impacting our community. Our weekly newsletters cover everything from sports to arts and culture, business, food, and more, along with daily updates of all the news we publish each day. Sign up or manage your email preferences at dailymemphian.com slash email. Jennifer Biggs, the host of Sound Bites. Thanks for joining us today. I have Jason and Rebecca Sievers, who own Bari, recently reopened on Cooper with me. We're on Zoom, and we're going to talk to them in just a second. You can find new broadcasts of Sound Bites on your Crosstown Radio, WYXR 91.7, Thursdays at 11 a.m. You can also find current and previous podcasts online at The Daily Memphian. And here we are, Jason and Rebecca. How are you? Great. Good. How are you? I am <laughs> I'm well, and I am so excited that y'all have opened. But we have so many things I want to talk about today what, that I know y'all want to talk about today. But let's start with, you know, I can see where you are. Looks great behind you. I see light streaming in. You've got wine bottles all back through there. And y'all, you really fell into a honey pot of a place, didn't you? Yeah. I think so. I mean, we wanted something that was different than what we had. We had been where we were for so long that we couldn't expand anymore there. We couldn't put a patio out there. We couldn't, we didn't have our own parking lot. I mean, there were just so many things that, to stay where we were would have just, you know, to continue what we were doing, which was, you know, we're fine. You know, we'd been there for 18 years, but you know, this is still doing what we're doing, but more room. It's a fresh, you know, a breath of fresh air, different vibe, you know, elevated. It is. It looks, and it looks fabulous. So, I mean, first of all, that's, the thing you've got something that looks fantastic it looks great from the outside the way you you know covered in the front porch where it's still open but you uh you know you've got the the privacy there what about uh side and back seating how's that uh how's that is it done is it coming along i know that, that we've talked about it but i don't know where you stand on it the um so the patio right now it does it is in the front and it wraps around part of the side of the building. We have plans to eventually when um, wood is a little bit cheaper and when we have a larger staff to extend it all the way to the end of the building. So right now it's just a little L shape around the front and part of the side, but there's plenty of room to expand eventually. You know, I hadn't even thought about, of course, the cost of lumber is <laughs> just insane. I mean, it yes, is, it, as we all know, so, or anybody who's keeping up with anything knows. Um, did, did y'all have, okay, you were able, I'm assuming, let, first of all, first of all, I, uh, cart before the horse, please give your uh, new address to people listening. It's 524 South Cooper Street. Which is the former Midtown Yoga. So it, it's right at right where Peabody Dead ends into Cooper. You can't miss it. It's just, it's what, maybe a, a thousand yards from where you were before. If that, it's not that far. It's a, probably you know, not 100 yards from where you were before. It, it might be a tenth of a mile. Right. Maybe. So Same side of the street. So, it's, it, if you, so there's no changing. Can be, you have parking there, like you said. So it's, uh, it's there outside seating. How much outside, how many, how much seating can you do outside right now? Right now we have eight tables outside, mm -hmm. which is about the size of our dining room at the old space. Right. Well, which was it's even about, smaller when you moved, right? Because it, well, shortly before you moved anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, nobody knows what's going to happen. We know we have some wild numbers going on out there, but right now, no restrictions. So are, are y'all putting any restrictions in place in the restaurant? Or are you just operating as allowed? We're, all, of, all of our staff is vaccinated. All of our okay. staff, all of our staff wears masks regardless of their 
you know, working or not, if you're in the building, you wear a mask. And we're asking that everybody that comes in wear a mask as well. You can obviously take it off for eating and drinking, but if you're just in the building, please keep your mask. The, the tables are, are spaced at, we are allowing a lot of space, Not maybe not six feet between each table, but uh, we are allowing space in between the tables. And if anybody requests to be secluded or to be away, then we definitely will honor that. It's big enough. This pay, the room is big enough to, to space people out. Right. And, and you can see that. And that's, I think, still sort of comforting. I mean, I don't know. I, I kind of feel that way. I mean, it, again, I'm starting yeah. to feel that way, right? I mean, it, you know, for a while there, we all think I mean, we, we have to move on. I mean, we're, do, we're all taking the precautions that we need to take. I mean, if they say that we need a booster shot, Next week, I'll be like, okay, let's get a booster shot and keep on with our lives because there's no way that I don't think the, the world can go back to a shutdown like that again. Like, right. I just think we have to be able to do it. And that's why that was a, a big point for when we moved here is because the restaurant that we were in, the dining room was so small with uh, seating, you know, spacing. We only had six tables. And with this now, even if we had to go to six feet, we could keep the entire dining room the same. Like it would just, we would just rearrange tables. So sure. that's one thing that sold us. It's like bigger dining room and the ability to see outside, because as you know, Memphis patio weather is from late September through, you know, I mean, it's, it's almost 20, it's, it's almost 365 because it's, it rarely gets super cold in this town. So now we have an opportunity because during COVID, everybody wanted to sit outside and we just couldn't help them. You know, we, we couldn't do anything about it. Yeah. Well, you okay. couldn't. That's true. I mean, even with the, you know, the city plan to to say you could take in some of the street. I know you tried to do that, but you really couldn't because you couldn't. There was a nice little plan, but there was nothing that ensured the safety of people sitting on the street. So we saw <laughs> how many times that median got hit in front of. Right. <laughs> yeah, so that, that was only in our sphere. We were just like, we can do this, but. I don't want to be the first person on TV that's like, oh, this was a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have wanted to be the first person sitting out there. I don't think I would have wanted to sit out on the street right there, right. frankly. So but there's that. Um, I'm kind of throwing this at you out of nowhere. And so it's fine. I, I, I doubt you've had, you had, probably hadn't even thought about it yet. But at last week, um, three places announced that they're going to go to having people show their vaccine card to come in to a restaurant. Have y'all thought about doing anything like that? We talked about it, but people that, that have, people that have been vaccinated are getting COVID. So that I think wearing a mask and recommending that our customers wear a mask is gonna be the safest thing to, to us. And at, at this moment, I mean, we don't know, like we, uh, we're suggesting that, you, you know, outside of work that you wear a mask, like to everybody that comes in here, we're like, put your mask on. Like we tell our staff, like, if you go anywhere, please wear your mask, you know, whatever. So I'm hoping that common sense prevails enough where we don't have to implement that where we're, you know, as you know, from talking to you last year about this and everybody else is kind of the same way in the, in the restaurant world. It's like something else that we have to check for. I mean, it's like, I don't care. I mean, I really don't. If somebody asked me if I was I'm like, okay, but there's people that do care. And like, it's like, right. you want to have many people, I don't know. It's, and also we don't really have the staff to police that. We don't have <laughs> yes. a host. Um, you know, it's, we have a very, very small staff and we really don't have anybody to just be at the door to, you know, so were you able to bring your staff with you uh, from before, but it was already reduced or what's, what is your staffing situation? I know it's still really hard for everybody. It's, you know, some of our staff came back and some of our staff did not. Let's just let's leave it at that. It's, it's smaller than before. Yes. It's smaller than it was. But you're looking, I assume, to get back to full staff. Absolutely. But yes. yeah, you know, we have no desire just to be open five days because, you know, we like we like being available for people. What are you open now? We're um, Tuesday through Saturday from okay. five to nine. 
it, but you want to be open on um, Sunday and Monday? Yes, we absolutely would love to be open seven days a week. And we'd also like to be open a little bit later. You know, our plan is eventually to have the bar and the patio open later than the dining room with not the full menu, but at least part of the menu still available for later night. And then we're not, we're not a late night place. I'm saying 11 o'clock. Sure. You, know, you can still get something to eat. Well, because you, I mean, you do have a good bar and you've got some exciting things coming up at the bar and that's a good time. I do want to talk to you, Rebecca, about your, your recent trip to Italy, but real quickly, let's take on the food menu. Um, real fast and then talk about it a little bit. And when we take a break, we'll come back and talk about drinks. So Jason, have you made changes to the menu with the move or can people still count on what they were getting before at Bari? We, there, we, you know, we had talked about before we reopened, like what if we just do something, not to say different, but like what if we took things off the menu and changed it and put new things on. And then we started going down the menu and we can't take anything off, which that's not a bad thing. We've been open no. almost 20 years. So people, it's like with any new staff member that we bring on, we're like, you know, we have a, not to say a reputation to protect, but people expect certain things when they come in to taste a certain way because every time they've come in for the past 20 years, it's tasted that way. So the menu is pretty much the same, but as with our menu in the past, we usually have five or six specials during the night or you know we'll usually have a fish of the day a meat of the day a couple of anapasti specials maybe a dessert some things like that but um nothing has changed i mean if anything we've added some things and we noticed that the availability is a lot different now um certain seafoods are a lot more expensive than they were and we're a, we're a very high seafood restaurant so Certain things that were on the menu will not be there because we just can't afford to put them on there. You know, there are a lot of things I've noticed like that, but, you know, here and there, I'll say, well, you know, whoa, look at the price. I mean, things you remember, mm -hmm. but I mean, I understand that it's because it costs more to get it. And I'm not sure that everybody in general understands that, but. You know, it's crazy because scallops, for example, were uh, $18 a pound for us. And now, now they're $33 a pound. And it's just like, what in the world is going why on? Did, why, why is that? Why are scallops almost double? It's the, well, you know, beef has gone up. I mean, I dairy has gone up. Eggs have gone up. Everything, which I guess it's a reflection of labor, I guess. I mean, we're having the same problems. I mean, things have to go up because we're having to pay more, you know. I wonder if, but you wouldn't think that scallops would be scarce. I wonder if there's um, just maybe people harvesting the scallops. Maybe they're having a that's labor shortage too. I mean, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. You know, I think it's just a matter of everybody's got a labor problem right now and, you know, they're getting what they can. I get, I don't know. <laughs> it's just, it was, it was funny because I was talk, Kelly called me the other day and we were talking and I said, there's nothing like being unexpectedly closed for two months to make you realize that prices have gone up. And that's on every aspect of what we do. Like her wine prices and liquor prices have gone up. My food prices have gone up. And it's just like, what happened? You know? One of my wine reps told me that there was a glass shortage. So a lot of the bottles, like okay. tequila bottles, were different, different shapes, sizes of different bottles. So it's just, it's so strange. There was, a, right, like a, a Worcestershire sauce. You couldn't get it for a while because of the the bottle. It, it wasn't because they had plenty of sauce. There was no glass to make the bottles. And they had to be the specific bottle, of course. So it wasn't like you could just, you know, put it in a jar, which would have been fine. I mean, you know, jar it up, put, right. it, in a, put it in a mason right. jar, we'll take it. And I, I, it's almost inexplicable to think why we're short on everything, but uh, but it seems to be we're at our halfway point. So we're going to stop for just a second to have a word from our sponsor. When we come back, um, Rebecca, will talk about your trip. And then I want to talk specifically about the cheese. And I want y'all to tell me how I can go about tasting every single cheese in, in uh, Bari. So we'll be right back after a word from our sponsor. 
Imani wouldn't be here if it wasn't for St. Jude. Everything was perfect until that day when she was five weeks old. So there was a fairly large and aggressive brain tumor, but St. Jude Children's Research Hospital gave us the ultimate gift in this world, which was hope restored. And she's tumor free now. We came as two desperate parents uh, and they saved our daughter's life. Visit stjude.org slash St. Jude Won't Stop now to become a partner in hope and get the new We Won't Stop t-shirt. First, before we get into cheese, let's talk about one. And I, I say, save the exciting news for uh, for after you tell me about your trip, because the trip sounds like it was great. I was following it on Facebook. So tell us about what you did. I, back in June of 2019, I enrolled in Venn Italy Academy um, to become an Italian wine ambassador. Um, it's something that, you know, Venn Italy is the world's largest wine expo. Um, and they created maybe 13 or so years ago, they created an academy. Um, so it's all about Italian wine. Um, there's less than 300 ambassadors right now in the world. Wow. Uh, but it's a great, it's an amazing course. Um, so I took it in June in New York, which that's another, a, another story altogether. But I, um, I retook it. And I signed up in June of 2020 and it was on, it was supposed to be in two parts. The first one was online. So you take the lectures and the classes are all online. And I was supposed to go to Verona to take the it's three days of tasting labs. And then you take the exam, um, which is extremely difficult. But um, so, you know, last year, obviously we didn't, I didn't get to go to Verona and nobody was allowed to go to Italy, uh, but they gave me the option to just kind of roll it over. So this year came along and we still had a lot of restrictions and I really didn't know if it was going to happen or not. So the very last minute it, it did happen. So um, the Italian trade agency paid to have us fly over and, um, stay in Verona for a week. And so we had all of these um, lectures and we had master classes with a lot of top producers in Italy. Um, and then, yeah, but it, it was, I did not pass, but I did better than I did the last time. So I think if and when I decide to retake it, I will pass. But it's, it's every time I learn so much more and Italy is such a complicated country for wine. Um, that, that's true. So, yeah. And I, w- I would have no idea because you always seem to know everything about Italian wine. I mean, we, I think you do know just about everything about Italian wine. So you didn't have to tell anybody you didn't pass. <laughs> take it. Take it back. Say, yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. She's being very modest because this is a big deal. I mean, Vin Italy is like the James Beard of Italian wine. Like it's have, the biggest deal. Like they have Atilio, event, right. Attilio Shinza is the chief scientist uh, for Vin Italy Academy. And he's a, he teaches in Milan or at the University of Milan, but he does um, like DNA, great DNA. Um, so it's way more complicated than it's geology, geography, history, you know, climates, microclimates, um, it's, it's really, really, really intense. So, um, yeah. (laughs) Well, I, I think you should go back next year because I I have faith in you. I really do. And I, I I say that, you know, with, with my heart, everything that when I, I start talking to you, I always realize how very little I know when, uh, because you do know so much about Italian wine. I will so my, I'm extremely shy, like debilitatingly shy at times. So it's, it's my love for Italian wine is it helps push me out of my comfort zone just to talk to people. Um, so it definitely has helped me to be a little more confident and to speak up a little bit more because I'm happy just to hide behind everybody and not speak. But well, with the, my love for Italian wine honestly has pushed me out of my comfort zone. Um, well, so, you speak yeah. very I, confidently and competently about it. And I, you cannot tell that that you're hesitant <laughs> in any way or, or that you're, I, did, I wouldn't even have known that you are shy. So, 
She's well, and it's okay. Right. Right. There's nothing. There's nothing wrong with being shy. I just I, I I would. That's not something I would have ever said. Oh, yeah, Becky's really really sweet, but you have to get to know her because she's really shy. I never thought about that. So <laughs> anyway, that sounds like a wonderful trip, and you you came back. I'm sure with lots of uh, ideas for new wines. And then you have this really exciting thing that's going to start, hopefully, when y'all uh, open on. We're recording on Monday, by the way, and they'll be back open on Tuesday for the week. So tell us what you're going to have on tap. We are going to have Prosecco on tap. And not just one, right? Which we're very excited. Um, well, yeah, we'll have two. Um, and they'll probably rotate Um Maybe. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But yes, we're going to start with um, with Prosecco on tap tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And this is something that I've, I, I guess I've never heard of Prosecco on tap, but it makes perfect sense. Obviously, you, a, a beer is carbonated. It stays on tap. Is it the same kind of process as, as having beer on tap? It's You have to use a no. nitrogen tank mm -hmm. of CO2. So it's a a little bit different um you have to convert the the kegerator to sparkling wine but it's yeah it's it's simple it's a, it comes in 20 liter um kegs that are disposable which is great for the environment mm -hmm. you know it's less less glass um we go through a lot of prosecco bottles here <laughs> mm -hmm. which we recycle anyway but the, the 20 liter keg should be it it should be a great a great fit do you and do y'all have wine on tap already? No, we don't. It's not going to do it's it that way. The first. Okay. It. I have. Um, I like the idea of wine on tap, but there doesn't seem to be a big selection still. Of you seem to if you say oh they'll say oh it's on tap and you say yay what do you have in a bottle usually i mean usually there's some things that are kind of fun i'm not saying that that it's always the case but it, it it's better i think in theory than it has been in practice so far but prosecco this is a brand new thing to me i can't wait to come in and say and prosecco goes really really well and with seafood. most cheeses and seafood no seafood yes but cheeses <laughs> and a, and uh, it goes really, yes, it goes, well, I, I think, really well with anything salty. That's one of my favorite things is, you know, the whole fried chicken or potato chips or anything like that. But cheese, I love. Okay, cheese. We're, you have 20 new cheeses, you told me, Jason. Mm -hmm. And um, we, I want to know how I can taste every cheese at Bari because I can't do all at one time. I could, I, I just don't think I could do the whole entire cheese tasting and appreciate every cheese I'm eating. Do you think anybody can? I mean, do you think that's even possible? We, I know people do it. We get people that do it, that do it regularly. We have, uh, there were a couple of younger kids, and I don't want to say yeah. younger, probably 12, 13, I remember. that for like three or four years in a row would come in on their birthdays and their parents would pay for them to do the cheese tasting, like the entire cheese tasting. And they would just sit there while their parents sat at another table and ate their dinner, you know. But so how many cheeses do you have total? Let's see, 40 right now. Yeah, 40. I think I could do, I don't know. Okay, if you have 40, that sounds like four good evenings to me. I think 10 at a time for, for me, I can see somebody Sorry. doing, doing 20. I can see somebody saying, I want to do five instead, but I think I could do, um, can you, if, if I were to say, can you arrange, if I want to do it over four times, can you go through and pick out, you'd be able to pick out cheeses if I were going to do like, oh, one yeah, we would, we, we figure out, say, right, we'll do the, this 10 and then we'll do the next 10 and do the next 10, you know, but we found that if you come in, because when you do the entire cheese tasting, you get a slice of each cheese. Like if you come in with, with four to five people and you get that and then get some drinks with it, like each of you gets just enough. Like, cause you're not, like you said, you can't eat right. 40 cheeses, but if you taste like 40 it's bites, tough. you can do that over a two hour period. And then by that time, the cheeses have had a chance to bloom again because they're sitting mm -hmm. out becoming more and more room temperature. 
And like, you know, we, you know, it's a lot of work. Don't get me wrong. Cause cutting 40 cheeses takes a long time just cause we, you know, we present it properly, but we, we, we like to tell people to do it. Just, you know, if you're curious, cause like you said, you can do it in groups of 10, but at the same time, if you did it all at once, you'd know which ones you didn't like. <laughs> you'd be like, Oh, that's horrible. Or I don't like that. Or, Oh, this one's great. Or, you know, cause there's cheeses we have on the menu that I can't stand. Really? <laughs> but I've got them on because I know people, Oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> I can't think that there would be a cheese that I would just say, oh, that's horrible. There may be a cheese that I think, oh, that doesn't have as much flavor or that's kind of flat or that just doesn't do it for me. But I'm not sure I would hate it. There yeah, are I don't like truffle at all. I don't so, like truffle cheese yeah, either. So like truffle cheeses, I, want, like, I don't like even cutting them because they stink. Like I just, I don't do it. Okay. Well, you're one of the few people. I'm, I'm, I'm one of the other. What about you, Rebecca? Where do you stand on truffles? I, I don't like truffles either. Me hey, either. I don't. Um, I don't understand the fascination. <laughs> I know there's people I've never understood this, the fascination. An Italian restaurant. don't like truffles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A- well, it, it, for me, I think so much of it is I got just one day I was eating some truffle fries again, and I just said, I can never, I can't put one more bite of these in my mouth. I can never taste this again. I just can't do it. I'm done with it. And of course, that's not really truffles, but it turned me off to everything, the truffle cheese to to anything. It was just, that was it. I was done. I just said, I'm with you on that. I completely agree. Well, so but you do have some truffle cheeses. So I guess you're right. There would be some that I wouldn't like too, but I'd still do them, of course. I try. Well, I'll try it, but I'm like you. I'm just like, okay, that's I, I've tried enough. Thank you. <laughs> right. But at least it's real truffles that are in the cheese. It's not something yeah. synthetic. It's not something that's going to taste fake. We just might not like it. Absolutely. And no. that's what we tell everybody that comes in here. It's like, you may not be familiar with lots of things that are on the menu, but we don't, we don't, we won't give you something that tastes bad or whatever. If you try it and you sincerely don't like it, we'll report place it we'll give you something else it's not like nothing's bad here it's just different tastes you know well uh, now do you do flights of wine do you do wine flights wine flights we did in the beginning Mm -hmm. and then we got too busy to be able to do it (laughs) because it takes a little bit more time sure um so no we haven't done it in years um maybe we that's something that we could bring back that would be uh, fun to do love, cheese and wine flights. Yeah, and I love, we do wine and cheese tastings um, right. every once in a while, and mm-hmm. that it's really fun. It's um, it's a more a little more casual than our wine dinners, but we we will pair three or four mm-hmm. wines with the cheeses. Jason talks about the cheese. I talk about the wine, um, and it's a fun way to try different wines and cheeses. Yeah, guys. That's what you need to do, though. You need to do a dinner that's the, all 40 cheeses. You need to do <laughs> just a cheese dinner. Did they come and do the, the 40 cheese tasting with the wines? That would be fun. <laughs> How many wines would you pair? Yeah. I don't know. That's, that's why you want to pair. That's why I was thinking if I was if when I said 10 cheeses, I was thinking if I went with 10 cheeses, I could do it with two possibly three wines if I wanted to go with any kind of a dessert wine, but two wines a night. I mean, two wines is good. I mean, three would be okay too. 40. I have no idea. Right. We did a (laughs) cheese tasting during COVID with, uh, Pasqua winery and we did five cheeses and five wines. Is that what we did? Yeah. I couldn't remember. Like, and that was really, really popular because like you said, people got to taste, but we, we tried to make sure that people tasted every cheese with every wine, not just one cheese per wine or one, you know, because some people like a certain wine and they're going to drink that. But we're like, no, you got to taste everything. Like, you know, because what you, what your palate is and what you like is going to be different than what my palate is or what Rebecca's palate is. But you know that some cheeses are going to go better with some wine. So maybe you could say like, okay, we're going to have these four cheeses. You should be drinking those with this one, mm-hmm. and these with that, or whatever. I don't know, but I think if y'all are the experts at it. But I know I would be there if you did it. I think. <laughs> Otherwise, I, think I would love to. Yeah, I think. I, I think we should break in the, the new space with the wine and cheese tasting very I, soon. We can I do think that. you should too, and I think you should let me know about it so I can make sure that I get reservations. 
We're telling you right now it's going to happen. Yes. It All will right. happen. Are, are you going to tell me that? Are you going to tell me that date five. right now? At least, uh, at least how many? At least five cheeses. <laughs> oh no! You got to go. You got to go big. <laughs> well, you got forty. Yeah, okay. you got forty. We have no problem going big, but it's just people are not like us. When I'm talking about the group of us that are talking right now, because like we would have no problem going into a place and getting ten cheeses and just drinking wine, and that's our dinner. You know, with a little bit of bread or some crackers or whatever. <laughs> me but other people, I don't because I'm, I'm perfectly content with that. And if you think more people would do it, we have, because, you know, well, it would just to, last longer. And they're welcome you know. to stay and order more food when right, it's absolutely. over. Right, absolutely. If they want it. Absolutely. <laughs> we can figure well, it out. I say, let's put the feelers out right now. Y'all y'all just, uh, y'all call Bari and let him know if you want to do it. And, uh, and <laughs> don't call Bari. <laughs> Don't call Mari. <laughs> well, don't call me. I can't do anything. I, I can, I can, but email me if you want to. I'll let y'all know. Well, I'm going to ring it off the hook. I know. I've heard the phone ringing even as we've been speaking today. Well, my plan is in, until I hear that there's something else coming from y'all, I'm going to try to do 10 with two wines and possibly a dessert wine with some of the, the, uh, you know, like the blue cheeses and things at the end. Um, Recciotto, the Amarone style dessert wine. Oh yeah, made right from blue. Amarone. Yes, it we have right that. Blue cheeses. <laughs> Vinsanto. Well, There's some really beautiful Italian dessert wines. I can promise you, I won't be do. I won't be drinking or eating one bite without consulting with both of you. So y'all will be able to tell <laughs> me every everything that uh, that's best to do, and I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'll be in very soon. Congratulations. I know it was a long time coming, and I'm so happy for y'all to know that you've got this great space where you'll continue. Your business will prosper, and everything is going to be great. And and thumbs up on the masks. I'm glad that you're still caring, watching out for the safety of your customers and, sure. your, and your staff. Absolutely. Thank you All so right. much. Thank you very much. See you soon. In-depth journalism in the Memphis community, The Daily Memphian is of Memphis, not just in Memphis, and seeks to tell the stories of this city. TheDailyMemphian.com. Truth in place.